Hey guys, today we are going to review linear relationships. So the first thing we're going to look at is slope intercept form, which remember is y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. You can find the slope by doing rise over run on a graph, or you can do slope formula. And b is the y intercept. That is the y value when x equals zero. So let's look at slope intercept form from all these different representations. Let's start with a graph. It says, what is the equation of the graph in slope intercept form? So we want to write it in y equals mx plus b. We need two things to do that, the slope and the y-intercept. So y-intercept is easier to find. You just have to look for it. That would be a negative two. And then my slope, I notice the line is going down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a negative sign and I'm gonna draw two perfect points on the line and then draw my slope triangle between them. The rise is two and the run is three. So the slope is negative two thirds. So that means my equation in slope intercept form would be y equals negative two thirds x minus two. Okay, let's look at the table. It says the table shows a linear relationship between x and y. What is the equation of the table in slope intercept form? So we need the slope and the y intercept. Let's start by finding the slope. I would do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm gonna label some points first, x1, y1, x2, and y2. So to find the slope, I'll do 600 minus 750 y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so two minus one. So 600 minus 750 is negative 150 and two minus one is one. So the slope is negative 150. Okay, now I need the y-intercept. There is two ways to find the y-intercept. The first way always works, and that is plugging in to y equals mx plus b and solving for b. So I'm gonna write down y equals mx plus b. I have the slope, I just found it, it's negative 150. I do not have the y-intercept, so I'm gonna leave b as b, but I have a table full of x and y values, so I just need to choose a point to plug in for x and y. I'm gonna choose the first one right here. So X is one and Y is 750. So I'm gonna replace Y with 750 and it equals the slope was negative 150 times the X value I'm working with is one plus B. Now to solve for B, I'm going to simplify this negative 150 times one and I get 750 equals negative 150 plus b. And the last thing I need to do to get b by itself is add 150 and 750 plus 150 is 900. So the y-intercept is 900. My slope was negative 150. So my equation is y equals negative 150x plus 900. Another way you could have found the y-intercept was just by using the pattern in the table. The x values are going up by one and the y values are going down by 150. And remember the y-intercept is where x is zero. So if you were to go to where x is zero in the table, it would be right here. And if we're following the pattern in the table, I would add 150 going backwards, which would get me to 900. So there's another way you could find the y-intercept without using the equation. Okay, let's look at the word problem. It says that Sweetberry Farm sells a pound of strawberries for $4 and a cup of ice cream for $5. Write an equation that represents the total cost C of P pounds of strawberry and three cups of ice cream. So they're leaving the pounds of strawberries open. I don't know how many strawberries they're gonna buy, but I do know that a pound of strawberries is $4. So for pounds of strawberries, I would do 4P. And then three cups of ice cream, I can figure that out because they told me that a cup of ice cream is $5. 
So I would do three times five for three cups of ice cream, which is $15. So now I can write my equation to find the total cost. I would do four pounds of strawberries, so four P plus that three cups of ice creams, which was $15. So there would be the equation in slope intercept form. Okay, the number four says graph a relationship where the y value is four less than half of the x value. So I need to write an equation first and then graph this. So it says where the y value is and is is the equal sign. So it's gonna be y equals four less than means I'm going to be subtracting four from half of the x value. So that'd be one half x. So there's my equation, my slope is one half, and my y-intercept would be negative four, so now I can graph this line. I'm gonna start with the y-intercept at negative four, and then if my slope is one half, that means I rise one and run over two. Rise one over two, and that is plenty of points to draw my line through. There would be the line in slope intercept form. Okay, let's talk about proportional, which is the same thing as direct variation. It can be written in this form, y equals kx. Notice there is no b value. And in a proportional or direct variation relationship, the slope formula will still work, but y over x also works and that's why it's called proportional because we can set up this proportion of y over x equals y over x throughout the whole relationship. And then non-proportional is either not a line or if it's a line it's going to be in y equals mx plus b form and it's going to have that b value. So the first thing they want us to do is determine whether these relationships are proportional or non-proportional. So let's look at the graphs first. This graph would be proportional because it's a line and it goes through the origin. This graph is a line, but it does not go through the origin. So this is non-proportional. Okay, let's look at the graph. Remember, if it is proportional or direct variation, we're gonna be able to set up that constant ratio throughout it of y over x. So I should be able to do y over x and get the same thing if it's proportional. So nine over one is nine, 18 over two is nine, 27 over three is nine, and 36 divided by four is nine. So this is a proportional relationship. And then the last question or the last part of this says, Joe pays to deliver flowers to his mom. It costs $3 per flower. So that would be three X plus a $5 shipping fee. So that equation would be Y equals three X plus five. Since we have that shipping fee, fee, we have that plus five. That means that this is a non-proportional relationship. Okay, let's look at number six. It says the cost for water usage varies directly, which means it's going to be proportional with the amount of gallons of water used. The cost for 9,000 gallons of water is $21.15. What is the cost for using 7,500 gallons of water? So there's a lot of different ways you could figure this out. You could figure out the unit rate and then just multiply the 7,500 by it. I'm gonna set up a proportion because I know that varies directly means it's proportional. So 9,000 gallons cost $21.15 and I want to figure out 7,500 how much money that costs. Notice I put the gallons in the top of both of my fractions. So now I'm going to solve this with cross multiplication. I'm going to do 21.15 times 7,500 and I get 15 sorry, 158,625 equals 9,000 times X. And now I'm going to divide by 9,000. 
and 158,625 divided by 9,000 is $17, and I would round that to 63 cents. Okay, last thing we're gonna look at is a graphed system of equations. So that's just two lines. And remember the solution to two graphed lines is their point of intersection. So this says a middle school volleyball team is comparing the cost of two different banquet halls for their end of season party shown in the graph to the right. The first thing they want us to do is write an equation in slope intercept form for both of the different lines. So let's look at banquet hall one. That would be this line that I'm gonna highlight in green. So it looks like I have a y-intercept of 100. So I'm gonna write that b equals 100. And then my slope is positive. And let's see if I can draw a slope triangle. So there's a perfect point, there's a perfect point. Here's my slope triangle. I need to be careful on the y-axis because I'm counting by 50s. So the rise is two spaces, but that's really 50, 100 over, I go from zero to four. So it's 100 over four for the slope, which is 25. So this equation in slope intercept form would be y equals 25 x plus 100. And now I want to write the equation for banquet hall 2. So that is this line right here. I can say I'm starting at the origin. So my y-intercept is 0. And let's see if I can find the slope. There's a perfect point and I don't see another exact perfect point until over here. So very big slope triangle. My rise is from zero to 600, so it's 600. And then the run is from zero to 20, so it's 20. So the slope is 600 over 20, which is 30. So this equation would just be y equals 30x since the y-intercept was zero. And then the last question says, after how many people would the cost for both banquet halls be the same? How much would it cost? So let's look at our graph. Here is where they are both the same. That is the solution to this system. That ordered pair is 2,600. So that means after 20 people, they would both cost $600.